Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jake Norton here. Um, I know it's been a while since I've posted anything on YouTube and you know in reality I, I only see the need to post here when I've got something relevant to share and, and I feel like uh, all of you, especially all of you who like me are into the story of Everest in 1924 and Mallory and Irvin uh, will find this interesting and relevant. So, um, so here goes. So for a long time, for many years, uh, you know, on my blog and the community I've built and, and here on YouTube and elsewhere, people have been asking me about my searches over the years, uh, locations of things that I found in areas that I covered, that my teammates found and they covered, and, and also about all the other searches over the years. And, and you know, there's, there's been a lot. There's a lot of information out there, but none of it, from what I know, is, is really available in a single place and, and put together in a visual, digestible, interactive, interpretable form. And, and uh, so I decided to do that. And, and before I forget, if you scroll down and go into the description, you'll see the project that I'm talking about here um, is linked in that description. Um, so make a note of that. But so about a year ago, I decided to start to work on that. And at first I built out a very basic digital interactive map of sorts of all the searches done over the years. Some of you may have seen it on my blog. Um, so it covered all the searches done over the years and all the items discovered related to Mallory and Irvin, the 1924 expedition and the pre-World War II attempts on the mountain. Um, and I guess I should correct that a bit. Um, I, I built out as much as I know about. Um, and there's undoubtedly additional items that have been found over the years. You know, it's been almost 100 years now. Um, and there's probably been some unofficial, impromptu, or unreported searches that have been done. And, and those, of course, haven't been cataloged here because I don't know about them. So, um, so anyways, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the searches map, and I'll get to it here in a minute. I'll show you it, but, uh, but first just wanted to, to talk about it and, and uh, caveat it a little bit, give you a little information. Um, so before we dive in, um, first, when, when you go to the project, and this is all included in, in the splash screen, there's a few omissions in there, or not really omissions per se, but rather items for which I didn't really have enough information to include. So, uh, so for starters, in 2004, Dave Hahn and I were on the mountain searching, and Everest News, if you know that uh, somewhat defunct website, everestnews.com, they were also conducting their own search with two Sherpa, Cheering Dorje, whose name you probably re uh, remember or recognize. Uh, he was the one who reported seeing a body in the Yellow Band in 1995 and also Nwang Jimba, who was with us on our search expedition in 2001. Um, I've included a really general area that I believe they covered, that Everest News covered in 2004 to one degree or another, but they were really secretive and they released very little to no accounts of what precisely was searched, what was found, etc. So I've just included the general area that I've been able to glean over the years. Um, then in 2008, Michael Tracy, who many of you know from his great research on this story, uh, was on the mountain as well to search. And from my understanding, on May 19th of that year, he and his guide, Arnold Coster, plus a man named Richard Thomas Maybank, who I don't really know anything about, uh, they apparently conducted a search from Camp 6. Uh, my basic understanding is there was a lot of snow that year and not much, if anything, was found. I'm assuming they poked into the yellow band and perhaps even moved over towards the greater Norton Coolwar, um, probably to check out the, the zigzag theory. Um, but I don't think anything much uh, was found. Michael has not, to my knowledge, released any information on this search and what was or wasn't found or learned. Um, and for various reasons, I haven't reached out to him to inquire more about that. Um, you know, Michael has done some great re research, but he's also chosen to create a pretty confrontational relationship with most people working on this and involved in the story. And in all honesty, it's not an attitude I choose to or want to engage with. Uh, so one more. In, in 2019, as most of you probably know, Mark Sinnott conducted a very brief search while descending with the National Geographic team from the summit on May 30th. My team was already off the mountain by then, so I've only been able to guesstimate where he looked based on video clips from their film, 
his description and his book, The Third Pole, and my knowledge of that area. Um, but I've, I've documented this, but it's not exactly precise. It's on the project, on the maps. And um, I, I believe he searched pretty much uh, where I was searching in 2004 and Jamie McGinnis looked as well in 2012, or pretty close. Now, one finally, final additional note. Um, you know, this project isn't intended to be nor purported to be 100% accurate or comprehensive. Um, I hope you all will keep in mind that I'm one person who has a passion for this story. I've devoted a lot of time, energy, personal expense, and real risk to telling this story. And I put all of this together for, for one reason and one reason only, to advance the understanding of what has been done, where people have looked, what's been found, and hopefully to shed light on what areas remain unsearched, partially searched, etc. And my hope is that others, like all of you here, might come to some conclusions that have been missed over the years, maybe find something new, maybe have new ideas add to the collection of research, and nothing, honestly, would make me happier. So anyway, to that end, I'm sure there's some errors in the data here. Again, I'm, I'm one person. I've spent hours upon hours coding and building this out. And honestly, I've, I've cooked a lot of brain cells over the years up high on Mount Everest. And so I'd never proclaim to have an error-free batch of data nor an error-free recollection of every event and every moment from the expeditions and searches I've been a part of. My brain just isn't that good. So I make mistakes. But sadly, our world today so loves a conspiracy theory, and unfortunately, the story of 1924 isn't immune to that, or, or at least it isn't these days. And in the past few years, some out there have chosen to conjure up conspiracies. I think these conspiracies are kind of based on fever dreams of secret troves of vast monies flowing wild, wildly about about sinister desires to control the story and the narrative and own it all and nefarious acts of moving artifacts and lying consistently and constantly and more. And, you know, honestly, it's not worth my time to engage with all of this. I, I go through life preferring to believe that most people are good. Most people are honest. Most people are doing their best. And frankly, all the people I've worked with on the mountain over the years have embodied those characteristics and all they do and all they have done. So to that end, I'll admit once again, there, there are certainly inaccuracies in the data presented here, but they're simply that, inaccuracies. And I hope you'll take them at face val value and know that anyone is free to point them out to me and I'll do my best to correct them. Um, this is a work in progress and hopefully it's an asset to all interested in the story of 1924 and Mallory and Irvin. So enough blabbing for me. Um, let's go ahead and look at the project already. I'll, I'll shut up here. Let me switch views here. And uh, all right, so this is the splash screen. Again, um, this is linked in the description below. You can go and check it out. Um, and uh, so splash screen, all the info I just shared with you that um, that uh, is uh, clickable away. All you do is click on it, it'll disappear. And you're gonna be presented with this view, a satellite image view with all the searches, all the search areas and artifacts and items found. Um, this was the first view I built out and I think it worked pretty well, but people understandably said it's kind of a confusing view to look at because it's not the one we normally look at from a satellite looking down. Normally we see Mount Everest head on. Those are the classic views. So I built those out as well. And if you go up to the upper left here, hopefully you can see the cursor, uh, click the hamburger icon and you'll see the satellite view. Then you're gonna see two other views that are more traditional head-on views. And I ended up building out all the data here on both of these images as well. So if you click on this one, <clears throat> uh, you'll see this is a panorama I took when on the mountain at, uh, in 2004, took it from base camp. I think it was about 30 shots stick together, or stitched together. It's a, a pretty high-res photo here. Um, and then the second image, which is similar but also different, uh, this was taken in 2012 by Simone Moro. We were, I was with a team attempting the West Ridge that year, and Simone was going up in a helicopter, so we asked him to take some pictures of the Hornbein Couloir so we could suss out the bad conditions that year. 
uh, but it also proved to be not only valid for that purpose, but also uh, for this. It gives a bit different view of, of the upper mountain, uh, showing a lot more terrain than we normally see. And, and if you're familiar with these projects I've put together, like the virtual Mount Everest, uh, you'll know that it's pretty interactive. You can zoom in. These are pretty high-res images. This one, not as high-res as some of the other, the other two, uh, but I um, up it and worked on it in software that I have to make it um, as detailed as possible. So let's work off this one for now. I'm going to close the browser there. Uh, if you ever need the splash screen to come back, you just click right here and it'll pop back up. Um, and you can click out of it and of course full screen versus small screen over in the right corner there. So the default view, if we zoom out, is going to be with everything on there. And don't forget there's a search area up here above the second step from 2019. Uh, so that gives you an overview of pretty much everything that's been covered on the mountain, uh, but it's pretty confusing and things overlap one another. So I think after you've digested that a little bit, the best option is to click this little all button here and I coded that so it'll turn everything off and then you can go year by year. Say you want to see what was searched in 1999, just click 99 and it turns on. You can equally click it off. You can also overlap years if you want to see 1999, 04 and 01. Um, you can click all those on. But let's Let's go year by year. So 99, obviously, as most of you know, a big year, the year that uh, we were lucky enough to find Mallory's remains. I've put that on here, uh, George Mallory, the general search area, um, kind of our search routes and different things that we found. So, you know, we found uh, the remains of uh, Wu Zhuang Ye, who uh, passed away in 1975, the 75 oxygen bottle and um, our high camp in 1999, the 33 high camp and the oxygen bottle, the source of a lot of conspiracy theory. Um, I might still have it in the wrong place on here. It's roughly correct. It was somewhere up in that region. Uh, Tap Richards and I were descending in a storm, wasn't all that nice. And, um, and honestly, I don't remember exactly precisely where we found it. And uh, we didn't take GPS nor photographs because we were in a blizzard trying to get down the mountain. Uh, so anyways, um, it's roughly in that area, but I'm open to corrections on it. <clears throat> so 99, we'll click through a couple others here. 2001, that year we were on our second search expedition. We wanted to find more evidence of Mallory and Irvin. But we also felt like we had opened a bit of a Pandora's box with discoveries in 99 and realized that there was still a lot of stuff up here. And if we didn't get to it, it might just all disappear into private collections. So we spent a lot of time on the mountain that year searching huge swaths of the mountain and trying to reco <clears throat> recover as many pre-World War II artifacts as we could, document as much as we could. And that all, all the artifacts we found, which were many, went into... Uh, an exhibit that we hoped would travel around the world and around the country. Um, it did a little bit, but now it kind of sits in cold storage in, uh, in Washington State. Unfortunately, there wasn't as much interest in it as we had hoped. But again, you can click on these different hotspots, the 1960 Chinese Camp 7A uh, that Brent Okita and I found in April of that year. I think it was April. Uh, let's see. Uh, anyways, it doesn't really matter. Um, April 29th, 2001, you can see that shot that I snapped with Brent in the background. Uh, other interesting things, the mitten that I found near the top of the climbers gullies, you can read about that. All the search areas, some amazing finds that Tap Richards had, including a piece of Mallory's sweater, which Michael Tracy has talked about recently. Um, 1924 high camp, anyways, lots of data there. 2004, Dave Hahn and I, as well as Everest News, were searching. Again, you can pull that up. This is the Everest News general search area. Probably not all of this was covered, but some of it was. And our different search routes. Uh, 2010, Jochen Hemleb's expedition searching in the warts. They didn't have great weather that year, but you can read about it. 2011, Jochen Hemleb's second search expedition, or really fourth, because he was with us in 99 and 01, instrumental. Uh, you can see the search areas there. 2012, Jamie McGinnis did kind of an impromptu search. I think this is basically what he covered. 
uh, click on it to read about more. And 2019, again, my expedition with Discovery and, um, and the National Geographic Expedition Search, which was really only a little bit in this area, Mark Synod on May 30th, returning from the summit. And again, you can click here uh, to see some info about I had half of our team search above the second step and some uh, pictures showing how unpleasant that terrain is up there. <clears throat> so that is uh, the search map. If we go back to all, and again, you can, you can see there's quite a lot of detail on here. Again, things may be missing. There may be inaccuracies. I can't guarantee any of it. Um, but I would love to hear from you. Please interact with it, zoom in, scroll in, look at things. Let me know, please, if something is off, if something is inaccurate, if something I've placed or done is not correct. Put it in the comments. Go to my website. Send me a note. Um, I'm happy to make corrections. It may take me a little time because everything has to be copied onto each node. It, all of this takes some time, but I'll do my best to make corrections and updates uh, as possible. Let me shift back here. I don't know why it's not shifting back, but um, anyways, uh, there we go. Now I'm back. Um, so please just let me know what I can change, what I can do, and also what suggestions you have, what more data, additional data I can add. One thought I had is maybe a year with ideas or a, a button at the bottom with ideas of future searches, where we still need to look, what data is missing out there. So uh, so please let me know what your thoughts are, what your comments are, suggestions, corrections, and uh, mostly I just hope you all enjoy it, hope you get something out of it, and let's all continue working to tell more of the amazing story of Mount Everest 1924. Thank you all very much, and, uh, and be well. Namaste. Thanks.